Okay, so um, next question in the group. This is huge because I've been going over this a lot, so I'm really glad that um, I saw this. Tammy Lynn, um, and by the way, your activity has been fantastic in the group. i got to open that door. So your activity has been great. Um, you've been bringing up a lot of good topics. So this one's long, but I'm, just, I'm gonna read it because it's this is important and everyone, I think, has felt this way at some point, or at least most of us. Um, <clears throat> I had another epiphany like the staging one. I kept wondering why I was attracted to narcissists since visually I chose men that I thought I'd be safe with because outwardly they looked so different and they had different backgrounds. Like one was a geeky computer scientist and another was in the military and so on. But looking back at their behaviors, they were actually very similar. So where did it begin? Then I realized my father was an abusive narcissist and my developing brain had made some kind of connection to that. Even though he would tell me he didn't want me to, he, he didn't want me he wanted a boy or um you're so ugly no man would want you and you'll end up a lesbian yet he said that to me when i was 10. not to mention the physical abuse when he was drunk but yeah it started with him and man was i surprised that i never saw the connection until now he died when i was 19. i hadn't seen him in over eight years and had always fantasized about him apologizing to me why would that make a difference i have no idea but here we are okay so that's, that's a lot. <clears throat> um, you told me a lot there, but that's good. Um, so I kept wondering why I was attracted to narcissists since visually I chose men that I thought I'd be safe with because outwardly they looked so different and had different backgrounds. But looking at their behaviors, they were actually very similar. So where did it begin? And, and you've, but you've done half the work yourself here. Um, then I realized my father was an abusive narcissist and my developing brain made some kind of connection to that. Um, so yeah, he, he really told you, you know, a lot, um, a lot of wrong things, a lot of inaccurate things about yourself when you were little. And, um, you know, he set the stage for, you know, what you were going to expect as normal. Um, and that's, you know, his behavior was bullshit. Um, not to mention the physical abuse and yeah it started with him um, surprised I never saw the connection until now it takes a long time to, to really pick that up it really does because you get so programmed because once you're programmed to see shit a certain way you you're just like you know with the blinders you know and and it it just takes a lot to push you to the point where you start to look within and say you know what, why is it like that it takes a long time it really does so don't feel bad <laughs> don't feel bad about that because that's you know it's hard it's hard to figure all that shit out on your own um, I hadn't seen him in over eight years and had always fantasized about him apologizing to me why would that make a difference it would make a difference because you know that you deserve an apology and you do your inner child especially deserves the apology because that kid is in there sitting there wondering what the hell happened and 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 why you know would you be why would you have to be told something like that when that's not really true? He should have, your father should have, um, you know, uh, been present with you and been supportive of you and loving of you. And he wasn't, he couldn't fulfill that role at all. And so that has left, you know, you as a child um, in, in need of that. And that, le that left a real void for you. And because that never got resolved and because um, he never apologized and instead just like decided to check out and die. <laughs> Um, without apologizing and, and especially without trying to talk to you for eight years um, that really left um, that left an emptiness and and that wasn't fair to you and um, the fact that you were wanting so much for him to apologize to you is because you deserved it and that's and and that would have been that could have really helped a lot that could have really helped you had he just been mature enough and been noble enough to just suck it up and say, you know what, I, I screwed up with you and I'm really sorry I shouldn't have done all those things to you. And that could have opened up a whole conversation for y'all to clear things up. He, you know, ideally he, he could have told you why he was drinking, why he was angry all the time and why he said those awful things to you. And, you know, maybe you reminded him, maybe when you were a kid, there's something about your personality that reminded him of, of somebody he didn't like in his family or whatever. And it just, you know, he couldn't handle it. I don't know. But 
uh, it, it is it is definitely okay for you to um, fantasize about him apologizing to you because that's that is what you deserved and that is what should have happened. It's exactly what should have happened. Um, sometimes I think about what it would be like if my dad was still alive and we were all you know still together and, and I, I I do wonder about it. Um, so everybody has something that they that they wonder what it would be like had it gone differently. Um, and I think in your case, you know, you were left to figure this out on your own. Um, <clears throat> but him apologizing would have been a huge difference. Uh, that that would have meant everything because you would have gotten the attention. Um, maybe not the. It, it, it wouldn't have made up for what was lost. You know, nothing nothing can do that. I suppose, but. Um, you would have gotten acknowledgement for what was done wrong to you and that would still you know clear things up a bit more than than just not having it at all and you know most of us don't get that apology so I know how that feels um, but the fact that you've you know put two and two together and realized that you you were used to his behavior and therefore kept running into it into boyfriends you know yeah that was good um, what you can do is um, apologize to your own inner child and tell her that um, she is accepted and loved just the way she is and that she doesn't have to be anything other than what she is and it's safe to be herself and it's safe to play and it's safe to be a girl and it's safe to um, whatever else you know on the list that he, he denied you you can you can sit there and do that and if you want to do that as an exercise like a mental exercise or something or like a meditation you can do that and you do that as often as you want you know, and eventually, um, you can you can soothe yourself and soothe your own inner child by reminding her that th there's nothing wrong with her, because children they try for their whole lives uh, and they strive their whole lives to get the parents' approval, whether they realize it or not. There's 40 year olds and 50 year olds that are still trying to make their parents happy, you know, and and we don't we don't realize that we do that, but because it's so natural to want to please the caretaker. Um, because the caretaker being pleased with us uh, ensures our survival. And even though when you grow up you have your own money, you have your own place, blah, 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 all the rest of it, there's there's always going to be a part of you somewhere that uh, the child part of you inside that wants that parent's approval. And there's and in your case, because he was so awful towards you and telling you that you were never going to be good enough for, you know, this many reasons, that child is, is wondering why she wasn't good enough and is wanting the approval. And uh, you can tell her that you approve of her and um, that she's, you know, just fine just the way she is. And that's, if it was me, that's what I would do. And, um, yeah, that's what I would do. So <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, but I'm, I'm glad that you figured that out because um, it, it's hard to figure that out on your own. It really is. And, um, you know, she just needs, the inner child just needs the, the um, openness and the, and the reassurance um, that everything really is okay and that she can be herself and, and and then in turn you know you as your adult self can reflect that you know and, and do things that your inner child would, would enjoy like um, you know going for a walk outside uh, or watching kids play in a playground or, or um, do, you know eating birthday cake or something like that or whatever it is you know that, that a kid would like um, you can do that and, and just let that child know that it's okay to enjoy that and, and it's okay to do that and be that way. Um, but yeah, you're right. It would make a difference. You know, you don't have to um, come at yourself uh, in a judgmental way and say, you know, but why the hell am I even feeling that? You know, um, it, or why would it make a difference? Um, you know, just be very open with yourself and be um, compassionate towards yourself and um, and open to whatever feelings come up and and just let yourself feel it out, feel out the feelings, <laughs> and just explore, you know. Um, we could do more one-on-one, -on -one, but, you know, for the time being, that's, you know, if, if I was in your position, that's what I would do. That's what I have done, um, and, it, and it does help. So, um, you know, if you, need, if you want to go deeper with that, just let me know. You all know where to find me, but, uh, yeah, that's a really good one, and I'm glad that you were able to, to see that even though, 
Because that's a mistake I made. I picked, you know, totally different personalities, totally different boyfriends, totally different backgrounds, totally different jobs, totally different body types. Totally, you know, I was real, op I was real flexible with, with all the stuff that, you know, is, is, um, uh, supposed to be so important, you know, but really it's, the, it, I was running into the same bullshit attitude <laughs> and I just thought, you know, what's my problem? But I had to be more compassionate towards myself and say, you know what, the five-year-old me is wondering why in the hell y'all can't love me. And the five-year-old me is also wondering why the hell my father can't, you know, uh, uh, be kind to me for five minutes. And it's just, you know, you, your inner child was trained to see that as, uh, as the norm. And we have to be careful with that. And, and, you know, especially with our own children, because we teach them what to accept as normal and, uh, knowing more about ourselves, we can know more about what to do with them and not pass that on. So, um, it's really good that you figure that out because you, you've got a lot of insight into yourself and, um, and you can pass that wisdom on to, to anybody that can use it. So, I'm glad that you that you figure that out. Um, but yeah, I would say some inner child work would would really help, and and that way you won't be asking yourself. You won't even have to be asking yourself why would that make a difference now, because it you won't. That's not what, you won't be there. You won't be thinking about that. You know what I mean? It'd just be well. I'm just gonna soothe the inner child as often as I need to. You know, until the the feeling subsides and and she um, relaxes. You know, and just learns how to chill and be herself. And then after that, it won't matter one way or another. You see what I mean? So, um, but that was good. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for listening. Okay. Bye.